All fish keepers make mistakes, especially me and especially with African cichlids. But if you know what to do and do your research, you'll know how to figure out almost any problem, no matter what it is. So I'm going to tell you the top 10 things I wish I knew when keeping African cichlids or any fish. Compatibility is a very major thing, especially in African cichlids. Sometimes you might not know, like, if you're at the pet store or online getting fish somewhere, you might not know which fish go with which. So I'm going to explain just with African cichlids and maybe other fish as well. So African cichlids have three groups, peacocks and bunas and haps, haplochromus, right? And so most people keep peacocks, peacocks and haps, or just in bunas alone. I keep all three together and I haven't had a problem and maybe I'll make a video about that in the future. But um, most people keep peacocks, haps, or just peacocks or just haps and then just in bunas by themselves. The reason why they keep in bunas by themselves and don't add any tank mates or at least other African cichlids that are part of the different species is because they are the most aggressive out of all three of the versions of African cichlids. They also have different um, substrate preferences, such as um, rocks and just mainly like rock structures, while haps and peacocks are free swimmers and they like to have as much swimming room as possible. That's why you can see all of my peacocks and haps swimming where you might not be able to see down there, but there's all my uh, uh, embunas just chilling under there by the rocks. There's also other fish like American cichlids with African cichlids. I do also keep American cichlids, but only blood parrots because blood parrots seem to be the like most like powerful or the most hardy out of all the American cichlids. I'm not sure if I'm 100% right about that, but they make a perfect match for them, especially if you need a little bit of orange or bright heat colors in your tank like I did and so yeah there are many different options of American cichlids and many different options of African cichlids but I would only stick with the priority uh, peacock hap and if you can do a lot of research if you can and bonus too and maybe American cichlids or do peacocks haps or just in bonus alone and then with almost all of them I would keep blood parrots, but the first fish you get in your tank, I would recommend be a peacock or a hap, just so it goes higher and higher in the hierarchy, because they do create a hierarchy, and once they create a hierarchy, uh, there's gonna be one from the tank boss, and then one all the way down to the very bottom. And so, if you get a peacock or a hap, they'll be the tank boss, and they'll be usually the most aggressive one towards all the others, or like the one that doesn't get messed around a lot and has the most brightest colors. And also, if you get a peacock or a hap as the tank boss and then introduce embunas to your tank and you introduce an American cichlid, those embunas will try to uh, chase the blood parrots, but the tank boss will also get like really, like, doesn't really enjoy that and will shoo the uh, embunas away from the blood parrots sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes. Overfeeding is by far one of the most popular mistakes that beginners make, especially when keeping African cichlids, because these guys are big, they get big, they have lots of color, and people are going to want to be like, they need a lot of food, right? But honestly, they really don't. So these guys are still growing up, except for maybe that guy right there. But um, these guys are still growing up. I feed them three times a day. Once in the morning for brine shrimp, then two times throughout the day uh, pellets. And, I'll sh and I made a uh, video about how I feed the pellets too. I use all the additives and stuff. But um, since they're growing up, I feed them three times a day because they eat more, then they grow faster. But don't get that confused because if there's any residual food that has been uneaten and they won't eat it, that is gonna start turning into ammonia and then nitrite and nitrate from your cycle which we'll get into that later, but that ammonia will give your fish ammonia burns until, or it has a chance, then it'll turn into nitrite, which is just as dangerous, and it'll turn into nitrite, which is a little bit dangerous, but it'll pile up faster, and so you have to do 
water changes more often and then it could hurt your fish pretty badly. What I recommend if you keep African cichlids, that's probably why you're watching this channel, but uh, just in case it's not, if you keep African cichlids, I would feed them three times a day or two or three times a day when they're growing up. And then when they're just about or full size, I would feed them once one time a day and uh, skip one feeding one day just to clear out their system. Decor is another very important part about keeping African cichlids and any other fish for that matter. So embunas, like I said before, they like rocky areas and they like to swim around in um, little tight spaces like rocks or anywhere just because that's just what they enjoy. While haps and peacocks like to swim in a full body of water. But there's other fish too that like that thrive in plants and sometimes they just don't like any decorations and sometimes it's um, also important to get decoration decorations for like my Pletco he really likes to be on the driftwood that I have in here um, what happens is I didn't boil the driftwood so it still releases tannins but since I have purigen in my filter it uh, absorbs all that uh, tannins. But I would recommend researching what your fish like and what fish you're getting in the future or maybe like right now and then figure out what decoration to get them before or maybe after because some fish uh, don't thrive in those environments and some fish do. And remember, we want our fish to thrive, not survive. Now this one might be kind of like a no-brainer, but sometimes it isn't. Water changes. Water changes, especially for African cichlids. Like almost no other fish, as much as African cichlids, are like at the very top of priority of water changes. So if you have an overstocked African cichlid tank like I do, which I recommend you do, then I would definitely water change at least once a week, maybe even twice. It really depends on how big tank, how big of a tank you have, and how many fish you have. But I have a 60 gallon with 23 fish, and my nitrates get up to almost like 60 at the very end of the week, and that's when I do a water change. I might start going to 60% water changes every uh, four days, but right now I go to 80-85% one time a week. And that seems to be really good for them since they're already used to it. But if you decide to do big water changes, like if you started at 20%, I would go down slowly just so they can get more used to it. So don't just go straight down to 80. Otherwise, you could have really stressed out fish and maybe even have them die during the water change just because of how stressed out they are over the water level. But say you started at like 20%, then the next time I would go down to 40%, then 60%, and then eventually 80%. Or maybe if you can't wait that long, go like 20, 40, and your nitrates are building up, what I would do is when you started at 20%, then I would go to 50, then 70, and then maybe keep it at 70 if you wanna go more than maximum, I'd say is 85. 90 is a little bit risky, but 85 seems to be the max I like to go for. If you're not sure what water changes do, water changes uh, remove water, obviously, and then replace it with clean, healthy water because the water in here gets uh, a whole bunch of not only like detritus and poop and stuff, but it also gets a whole, 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 whole bunch of nitrates. And as you know, ammonia, nitrite, and nitrate are all harmful to your fish ammonia and nitrate more harm harmful than nitrate but as nitrate builds up and gets bigger and bigger parts per million it can get a lot and a lot like more powerful and hit your fish harder and it be more dangerous for them to survive in a tank like this <laughs> Over 
overstocking slash understocking is also a very important part with African cichlids and a lot of other fish too. With African cichlids, I recommend you overstock. So I would recommend at least a 55 gallon tank, but you always want to like bigger is always better for African cichlids, especially with like African cichlids, especially because these fish are amazing and you want to, you like are probably going to want to get more and more, right? Uh, and these guys are just like super cool, super vibrant, super uh, super active and playful seems like. And so you're gonna wanna get more and more. And so you're gonna wanna overstock. Overstocking not only helps with uh, your mind being happy, but it also helps with the aggression in your tank by uh, spreading out the aggression levels. So say your tank boss is mad at one particular fish some some fish also can anger the tank boss and so it'll go after that many or sometimes usually it just uh, one fish goes after all of the other fish and sometimes that's called the tank bully but um yeah it'll go after different fish instead of one fish getting harassed like all 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 the time and so it's going to help a lot with overstocking so I would recommend if you have a 55 gallon, maybe the maximum is about two gallons per one fish, but that's like the max, max bio load. So I would recommend getting like maybe five to 10 less. I have a 60 gallon and I have 23. So I have seven less than my max and I don't plan on getting any more until I get a new tank or like a bigger tank, which I do plan on getting a bigger tank or a new tank, uh, whether I get one for Christmas, hopefully, hopefully, or I just save up for one and get one for with uh, my money, but it it's whatever. But those levels I definitely recommend. And I wouldn't really go any higher. Like, especially if you have a 60 gallon, you go 30 fish. Like that's the very max. And I wouldn't even really recommend that much. I would recommend maximum 25 just because of the uh, bio load and the space. There's some fish too that do like understocking, such as like any uh, fish that like to be in a planted tank. Like a lot of them like to be, um, like a lot of fish that can be in a planted tank, which is like a lot of freshwater fish. They all like to be understocked. I mean, you can still overstock them. It's not a big deal, but some of them like neon tetras, carnal tetras, bettas, um, Cory cats, a lot of different ones like those, and like maybe even um, uh, just any small or decent sized fish like garamis or rams, any of those fish that can be in like a planted tank, like to be understocked. Plus, it would look a little bit cooler because it would look more natural, like planted tank plus like a little bit of fish. And so, yeah, the importance of understocking is not only because it helps with your brain being happy but it also helps with when your fish are understocked they have a lot less stress especially in planted tanks because planted tanks already take up a decent amount of that water but they don't want to be crowded and like have nothing really to uh, be in peace with and so some fish like to be alone or just very little tank mates <laughs> Here's one of the ones I really wish I knew when first starting, because it wastes a lot of money, is filter cartridges. Uh, some hang on back filters um, come with these filter cartridges. I would not keep buying filter cartridges, especially what it like tells you to like, uh, you put it in, remove it after a month, because a lot of filter cartridges come with like this mesh stuff plus a, a little bit of carbon in it and you have to remove it every month because of the carbon. I would not recommend getting filter cartridges. Instead, I would recommend getting three things. Sponges, coarse, medium, or fine. I would recommend coarse or medium. And then for your, uh, the second thing, the polyfill. Polyfill, I keep it in my filters. Thanks, Caveman Aquatics, for uh, uh, mentioning that to me. But, um, 
putting that in your filter gets like super tiny particles and it helps so so much with keeping your tank like crystal clear like my tank is pretty clear right now there's still a little bit of floaties just because I just did a water change and I just cleaned out my filters and uh, yeah polyfill gets those small particles the coarse or medium sponges get the bigger particles that if too many bigger particles hit the polyfill then it will block the water from going inside the polyfill and then the water will have to force the polyfill up or go around it and then could possibly overflow your filter and water just dump out but uh yeah i would recommend getting coarse medium sponge polyfill and then the third thing or maybe even a fourth thing too but the third thing biomedia biomedia is like really good for your um biological filtration because biological filtration is basically ammonia turns into nitrite nitrate turns into nitrate right that's basically the nitrogen cycle and the bio like media helps with having that beneficial bacteria grow on it and it creates a whole bunch of surface area that like honestly if i didn't have any bio media i don't think my fish would survive as long as they have just but that's like how important uh bio media is it also grows on a lot of other things too but like if you just stuff your filter with like all polishing just like whole bunch of polyfill with all the fine things or just coarse sponge coarse medium sponge plus polyfill then that beneficial bacteria will still grow on there it grows on everything anything you see in this tank it has grown on the fourth thing i recommend which is not like super important is chemical media like purigen and carbon i use purigen but um you don't have to use it it helps with regulating the ammonia nitrite and nitrates uh it just helps keep them um, keep the night or the ammonia nitrite down and the nitrate stable and i keep them in both my filters in a little mesh bag <laughs> Next thing is probably the most important thing, which is water parameters. At the beginning, I had no idea about water parameters. I didn't know about pH, ammonia, nitrite, nitrate, or any of the like biological uh, stuff that goes on. I had no idea about that. Uh, but when I recommend fish, the first thing I say is learn about your parameters. So ammonia nitrite nitrate ph especially ph with african cichlids they like high ph between like 7.8 and 8.6 or maybe even a bit higher to almost to like 9.0 but um definitely learn about your water parameters especially when keeping african cichlids because they produce a heavy like a very heavy bio load and you need to have a lot of uh, biological filtration and uh, biological just beneficial bacteria to keep these guys alive and produce nitrates over nitrite and ammonia so basically what ammonia does is say you drop a little bit of food in here or the fish poop that's ammonia it you drop a little bit of fish food and it decays over like three days that turns into ammonia and then the ammonia turns slowly like so it goes fish food decays turns into ammonia the ammonia slowly starts turning into nitrite which is the second strain to turn into nitrate which is the thing you want the most but nitrite slowly turns into nitrate and that's because of all your beneficial bacteria in your tank and on your surfaces and stuff you want to make sure you have a whole bunch of uh beneficial bacteria or biological media or both you you want to make sure you have both when you're keeping african cichlids because like i said they produce a very heavy bio load but um make sure that when you uh keeping african cichlids to um let the tank cycle first or like you can wait like four six weeks drop a little bit of food in there and then just let it sit for like a month or two or what i like to do is i like to use stability or quick start both of them work essentially the same thing 
but um, stability is more stability is more like a uh, more concentrated version of quick start but um I would recommend both of them they're both just as just as good as each other and they help cycle your tank like that fast or what also you could do if you had a spare tank that had fish in it you could just get some media from there since it already grew beneficial bacteria you could just stuff a little bit in there and then let the tank run for I don't know couple 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 days and you can have like a fish in there too just to produce the ammonia so it can turn into nitrite the nitrate and um once your tank gets like fully cycled and has a lot of beneficial bacteria then i would recommend adding african cichlids the ph is also a very important thing uh you want to get your ph uh, between 7.8 and 8.6 around that area but if you have blood parrots it's kind of more squished down to a bit between 7.8 and 8.2 they prefer lower ph like 7.8 but they can handle up to like i think 8.2 and so i would uh make sure your water parameter or your water ph is in between 7.8 and 8.2 to keep blood parrots or any american cichlids how you can get your ph that high is two methods you can use crushed coral in your filter or as like a substrate or use a uh, aragonite sand which that's what I use and it works amazing it buffers the water and also if you want to um when you do your water change and you want your uh, water to go in pH faster than what aragonite sand will do then I would recommend using cichlid lake salt I think it's called and it will uh, get your pH along with a few minerals that your fish need and it will get into your uh, water like really fast and it will buffer the water. I explained that a little bit in the uh, last segment but this segment I'm going to talk fully about the cycle. The cycle ammonia nitrate nitrate is a very important thing for any fish, no matter really what fish it is. So basically how you would start your cycle is you'd fill your tank up with water and put some stuff in your filter, like maybe like polyfill or like biological media would also help a lot. Then drop a little bit of food in there. Like you can use flakes, flakes decay faster than pellets, but you can also use pellets. Or you can just use pure ammonia, but I would not recommend using a whole bunch because that stuff is like ridiculously concentrated. So you can maybe just like buy ammonia, pour it in, or just um, put like a little flake or two, and then just let it sit for weeks, like like eight, like four to eight weeks, and then you could uh, basically be cycled. Make sure you check your water parameters with API master test kit first but um yeah it'd probably be cycled by then and then what are the other option you could use is like pure ammonia or maybe uh some cycled media in your filter and then add quick start quick start and stability both they both work really fast and can get your cycle started within a day maybe two which is like really impressive but basically how the cycle works is you put fish food in and ammonia builds up then the ammonia starts to decay and turn into nitrite which that st those strains the nitrite and nitrate uh, both happen like pretty fast between each other what takes the longest is ammonia turning into nitrite but once it does that you can know that your tank is cycling really fast or your tank is going to cycle within probably like a week after that and then once you get nitrates do water change and then you can add fish but make sure you have like zero nitrates or um, zero nitrites and zero ammonia this one's gonna be qu pretty quick but it kind of goes in for the last one patience is key Keeping patient and like not messing with your water stuff at all is going to help a lot in like the long term or just like with your brain being happy because uh, your fish will survive. If you be patient, 
and uh, with your cycle and stuff. So my top advice, be patient with African cichlids. <laughs> The last one's also going to be pretty quick is aeration. Aeration is very uh, important in your um, African cichlid tank because they t intake a lot of oxygen. So as much surface area as you can with like a Waymaker filters or air pump, oxygenate the water and then because of uh, carbon dioxide exiting and oxygen entering, then you will get um, oxygenated water, which I 100% recommend if you don't have an air stone or anything causing surface agitation, I don't really think you can keep African cichlids.